This is a tutorial introduction to using the Starry Landscape Stacker application to make photographic images with stars as points and a fixed landscape. Uh, when you first start the application, it offers to show you some documentation. If you have been using Starry Landscape Stacker in the past, it will give you, uh, and you use the new version, version 1.3, it will first offer to show you the, some documentation on using version 1.3, or it may offer to show you, if you're a new user, uh, documentation uh, for new users. Uh, you can stop this window from appearing by uh, clicking this box here, but I'll leave that unclicked and we'll just skip past here for now. Next, you get to uh, choose some files to import. I'm going to begin by selecting three dark frames and six light frames from this test shoot I did. I'm going to say open. It begins by reading the nine images. And it's classified them as six light frames and three dark frames. And it's reading them in and averaging the dark frames, subtracting them from the light frames to remove fixed pattern noise. And it's gone through and attempted to find stars in the images and put red dots in, the, in here showing where it thinks it's found a star. It's doing this not because it wants to find stars. It's doing this because it wants to find the sky. And stars are generally in the sky, so it's a good thing to to start by finding stars. One of the things I can do is try and uh, add some more red dots to here, painting in the red dots to say, this is sky too. So I can fill in some areas where there aren't any red dots because there aren't very many stars. So here's an obvious piece of sky with not very many red dots. And I'll just paint in some red dots to hint. I can do that wherever I want. And that's pretty good. That's good enough for now. Trees in general are difficult because they have all these little edges and things. Uh, sometimes what you'll have is uh, you'll have some red dots in the foreground because there's lights on the ground or light shining through the trees or something else, or reflections or, or highlights in the foreground. Uh, if you have red dots here, and this obviously isn't sky, uh, we can get rid of them by selecting here, remove red dots, or we could have simply press the G key so we can erase these red dots. We can undo this if we want with Command Z. And we can redo it with Command Shift Z. The uh, eraser size we can adjust if necessary by uh, moving this slider and now it's much larger. Or we can use the uh, square bracket keys to change the size. We can zoom in on the image zoom back out, and we can change that with the Z key. I prefer to use the Z key over the button because what I can do is I can point to a certain area on the image and hit the Z key and it zooms in on that area. Um, if I'd use the button that I have to zoom and then scroll. So now I can see this area quickly and easily. So I'll use Z to back out. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast of the uh, display here. This is useful if you have uh, an image where it's hard to see the difference between the sky and the ground. Uh, you might be able to bring up some contrast or somehow adjust it so that you can see better what's going on. You can show and hide the overlay. In this case, the overlay means the red dots. Later, it'll be the uh, blue mask representing the sky. And we can change the opacity of this overlay. And we can control which image we're seeing. Right now we're looking at what I call the composite image. I'm going to use the O key here to hide the overlay. I'm looking at the composite image, which shows the stars as short trails. Uh, this is the average of all the input images. But I can select an arbitrary image here. And this is one of our input images. I can use the arrow keys to step through these. And you can see the stars moving as I step through the images. And there's our composite image. So let's go back to looking at our overlay here. Let's zoom in over here. You can see, uh, oops, let's change this. I want it to be on the composite. Stars show up as these short uh, trails. I'm going to switch to painting stars by hitting the S key. Uh, the stars show up as uh, short star trails, and we want to turn those into uh, uh, essentially points uh, through the process of using Starry Landscape Stacker. But at this point, we wanna, I will think it's best to see the short trails because you can see those things that really are stars that should be part of the sky and those things that are not moving, lights that aren't moving, which might be part of the ground. Here, there are no 
uh, stars that are, oh, no bright spots that aren't moving. So everything's a star. When we're dealing with difficult uh, places like the trees, where we have all these details and uh, things where you have stars behind stars uh, uh, in between. Do we have an example of a star in between? Oh, there's pretty close. Um, it becomes very difficult. So there's a separate, uh, a separate video explaining what to do in those cases. For now, uh, we'll call this good enough and we'll go on to the next step, which is finding the sky. We just click on the Find Sky button. And now we have a mask for our sky. And in general, this is pretty good. There are some issues with this mask. Let's zoom in right here. And you can see how there's these stars that are moving that aren't masked. They're not part of the sky. And uh, well, that's a problem. And there's no really good solution to that. We can see over here that we have parts of the tree that accidentally got marked as parts of the sky. I'm going to leave that, but uh, normally what we would do is we'd uh, use a G key, switch to painting ground, maybe make this a bit smaller, and we could e erase the mask in this area. And that would work quite well because we really haven't exposed any stars, just a tiny bit of star there. So that would work okay. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you what happens when you don't uh, explicitly say that that's part of the ground. So I'm going to leave the mask as again here. We can see a place where this should be marked as ground and not sky. We're going to zoom out. We're going to make the uh, brush much larger. Switch to painting sky. Just fill in some of these areas that got missed. Let me leave that last one. We'll deal with that later. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity going to crank the opacity all the way up. So by doing this, it makes it easier to see some defects. So you can clearly see some stars uh, didn't get marked here for some reason. We'll click on those. It's also on the edge here. Some, so we'll get that and we'll get this and we can zoom in here and see if we can clean that up. Oh, there's really nothing to do here. Yes, I can't make that any better. Okay, good enough. So now what we can say is align and save. And this is where Starry Landscape Stacker does what it's really uh, intended to do. And that is align the stars in the sky and then average all the images together in order to reduce the noise. This can be a very time consuming process if uh, the sky has some attributes that make it hard to align. For example, uh, fog or, or not very many stars. That can make it very difficult for Starry Landscape Stacker to do its job and it can take a very long time to do the alignment. In this case it works through fairly quickly. And what we can do now is save our resulting image. So I'm just going to, oh, before I do that, I could check this box here and uh, we will it will also save a copy of this image but including the mask. So you could use that mask in uh, further post-processing in uh, Photoshop, for example. But for now, I'm just going to save this image, click Save, and away it goes. Now we can zoom in on this image and we can see that uh, our alignment is pretty good. Let me just go over here and go from our composite image to the image I know is the one that uh, Starry Landscape Stacker aligned everything with. And you can see the stars didn't move uh, when I go to the original image and the, um, the sharpness of the stars doesn't change very much, right? They haven't been blurred, but the noise is considerably reduced. So here's the, one of the original images. Well, actually this is one of the original images after uh, fixed pattern noise reduction. And here's the final result. You can see that the noise is considerably reduced and that's only with uh, six images. But let's look at something else. We know that there was a problem with the mask over here and parts of the tree were included in the sky. You can see that that tree has been blurred in those areas. So it would have been uh, good to fix that. We can see some other areas here where the tree is blurred. But finally, I want to show something. I believe it's this piece of branch here. If we go and step through the images, you'll see that it's moving around. And there's nothing we can do about that. That will be blurred in the final image because the branch was moving around in the sky. So zooming back out, 
That's what our final image looks like.